Highlands House is a stunning early Georgian mansion which is particularly notable for its distinguished residence over the years. The house was built by William Stewart. He bought the land and various buildings from the New Inn in October 1716 and built this house, initially known as the Highlands. He also built another on the land, which was subsequently known as Highlands or Whitmores. The similarity in naming makes for some challenges when researching this house. In 1721, Sir William was elected Lord Mayor of London while he was living here. At the time of his death in 1723, aged 80, he lived here and let the other house to a tenant. Both houses were disposed of by his executors in December 1724 to Mika Perry, a London tobacco merchant who was an MP between 1727 and 1741 and he too became Lord Mayor of London in 1738. His father and grandfather were hugely successful tobacco merchants, but he was a better politician than businessman, and his business declined. Ten years later, in December 1734, he was forced to sell this larger house to John Stark of London, and he retained the smaller one, the Highlands. John was a merchant, born in 1685, who inherited a substantial estate from his father, Thomas, a tobacco trader, in 1705 or 1706. He spent a lot of time in India but retained this as his London home until his death in 1765. The house was then left to his son Richard, who was born in India and became Governor of Port St George in Madras, now Chennai, for a short period in 1752 and then Deputy Governor of Fort St David's until 1756 when he was replaced by Robert Clive, that's the famous Clive of India. Richard returned home in 1757, according to his gravestone, because his dad insisted, so he'd been back for quite a few years before inheriting this house in 1765. However, he seems later to have chosen Pisa, Italy, as his home, and died here in 1794. He left the house to his wife Mary in trust. Because his son had inherited a considerable fortune from his grandfather, he directed his wife to give him no more than £500 as a sign of affection and left the house and grounds to his daughters, Mariana and Louisa. Louisa had already died in Nice in 1792, so Mariana was the eventual beneficiary. Mary took possession of the copyhold in November 1794, and in 1804 she was living in Exmouth, Devon, and obtained a licence to let the property to James Gubbins, a surveyor from Surrey, for 21 years. In January 1805 she transferred the house and land, now lived in by James Gubbins, to her daughter Mariana. Mariana was a travel writer, what a fabulous occupation for a lady of the early 19th century. Between 1806 and 1812, the artist John Constable made many extended visits to this house, as James Gubbin and his wife Mary were his uncle and aunt. In 1809, he painted viewer Epson in one such visit. By 1817, John Talbot had taken over the tenancy, and Mariana passed the house to her brother Richard, the one who previously had been excluded by their father. At the time, he was living at Lahern Castle in Carmarthen, which was his wife's property. Lady Duckenfield, Joseph Kilner, and then George Perks Barclay were subsequent tenants, and in April 1825, Richard Stark sold the house to that latter tenant, George, for £2,000. He was director of Royal Exchange Assurance. In the 1841 census, the house is shown on New Inn Lane, and Maria Barclay, George's wife, and two of her adult daughters are living at the house, along with a household of eight servants. George may have been away on census day. The house was sold to Nathaniel Alexander in September 1842 for £1,900. Interestingly, that's £100 less than George paid for it. On the 1851 census, Nathaniel and his family are shown in South Street, Epsom, with entries for New Inn Lane alongside, so we think this is the same house. He's 54 years old, a merchant, and is living with his wife, Sophia, their eldest son, also Nathaniel and also a merchant, along with two daughters and another son who's eight. Nathaniel and Sophia were both born in Ireland. Their elder three children were all born in India. They have eight servants, including a cook, kitchen maid, ladies maid, a laundry maid and a footman. By the 1861 census, Nathaniel is listed as an East India merchant and their second son, William, is now with them as a prominent civil servant. Their third son, now 18, is Oxford and their two daughters are still unmarried and living here.
The census also shows eight servants. They now have a butler whose family were living nearby, a page, cook, housemaid, lady's maid, and various others. By the 1871 census, Nathaniel and Sophia are still here with an even bigger household. Two sons and three of their daughters are here, one with two children of her own, and there are three other children of a different daughter. The five children are aged 11 to 16, so it's perhaps no surprise to see a governess also living here. There are also nine servants, as he's now added a second lady's maid. In December of 1875, a petition of bankruptcy was presented against Nathaniel Alexander and his business partners. Robert Palmer Harding, an accountant, was appointed trustee. He surrendered the house to Henrietta Francis Scott of Epsom, a widow who had bought it at auction on the 19th of November 1875 for £3,400. Now Henrietta was one of Nathaniel's daughters already living with them at the house. Nathaniel died in October 1880 and in the 81 census his widow Sophia is head of the house although we know Henrietta was the official owner. Henrietta is here too with three of her children along with one of her brothers, a sister and a cousin. They have eight servants. Sophia died in April 1883. In September the following year, Henrietta obtained a license to rebuild some of the outbuildings. And in 1886, she mortgaged the property, now occupied by Thomas Townsend Butnell, for £1,500. In the 1891 census, we can see Thomas Butnell and his household. At this time, he was a barrister from Devon, living here with his wife Annie, and his 20-year-old daughter from a previous marriage, and their son and daughter, aged 6 and 16 months. They had seven servants, including a coachman and footman, and the coachman's wife and five-year-old son who were also living here. Thomas Townsend Bucknell, known as Tommy, was MP for Epsom from 1892 to 1899 and made his homes at Woodcote Lodge in Epsom and here. He vacated his seat on being knighted and raised to the bench. Both his stepson and one of his sons were also judges. Unlike some other MPs, he played a very large part in Epsom life and was much mourned by his residents when he died. He retained this house for quite some time. By the 1901 census, he had been knighted and is a High Court judge. He's running a household in Chelsea as well as the one here. Here he has a housemaid, a useful maid, a coachman, cook and a gardener, most of whom also had their families living here. By 1911, Tommy had a smaller household here. He died in 1915, probably at his other Epsom house. Also in 1911, we find reference to George Alexander Scott owning the house. This is one of Henrietta's sons, who owned the house in the late 19th century. So the house was in the same family since 1842. In 1918 and 1919, he's living at the house, and in 1920 and 21, he's at Highlands House or Lodge, presumably another property on this estate. We can't find any information for a few years and it looks like the house was empty at the time of the 1939 register. By 1952 the upper storeys were already let as flats as they are now, with the main house occupied by Henry P. Sanders, who had been an architect and surveyor. He was still here in 1962. We've not traced more recent history, but the current owners have been here for many years and have created a beautiful modern home in this historic building.